How do you do? Mighty pretty greeting. How do you do? Say it when you're meeting. How do you do? With everyone repeating. Pretty good. Cheer with your bone. You didn't know we're recording, right? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. You're on. Oh. Don't that um start over. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's that's a perfect intro. Ah. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Movie. Movie, movie, movie. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Movie Toast News Podcast. I'm here again with Tommy. Hi. And I'm here with Adam. How's it going, everybody? Tommy, what are we talking about this week? We got a new possible movie coming to Disney+. Plus. What is that? I'm talking about Adam Shankman uh, will be directing Hocus Pocus 2. Uh, he's going to be conjuring up the Sanderson sisters for another movie. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for it. Uh, the only thing that I years. wasn't excited about was reading that the cast from before is not being, uh, they're uh, not reprising their roles as of right now. But no, the, the, the witches are. They will be. Yeah, Wait. they're they're all signed on. They signed on back in uh, October. I was getting that confused with another article. Never mind. Yep. Yeah, I'm excited. Are the kids and the cat and the girl coming back or no? Well, Not the cat won't yet. be. We all remember the ending of the first Hocus Pocus. The cat can't come back. Yeah, no. I mean he could come back as a boy or whatever. Oh, that's true. Well, no, because he 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 was at peace. He got to go with his sister. Yeah, but this is uh, the movie world, baby. Yeah, I mean this. Yeah. I just want to see. I'm curious to see how they bring the Sanderson sisters back again. Does anyone feel like Hocus Pocus 2 might be a little late? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, very much. Yeah. The movie came out in 93. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but even even in the terms of like, like in 2010, people of a certain age at that time who grew up with it wanted it. And I feel like those people have grown up out of it. Maybe they'll watch it with their kids now because they're about that mm-hmm. age. For for yeah. years, they were going to do this. Uh, they were going to do a TV movie straight to ABC Family or Freeform, whatever the hell it's called now, without any of the original cast. And everyone was pissed. Even the cast was pissed. So it just took this long to actually get the contract signed. That's disappointing. Everything about the story is kind of initially exciting and then mildly disappointing. Yeah. But what's next, um, Tommy? Taika Waititi is set to direct two Netflix animated series. If they weren't animated, I probably would watch them because they both look uh, fascinating. But I don't want to watch animated series on Netflix. I'm sorry, I don't. I but don't. It's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and it's another one about Oompa Loompas. See, I don't give a fuck about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We've seen that. We've been there. We've done that many times. I want to know what the fuck's going on with the Oompa Loompas, and I think original. he's the right it's man to tell us take. about it. Yeah. He's a fucking wacky guy. He does comedy well. So, I so think is it like great. Oompa Loompas Origins? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like series. Is it just me, or is it like my life just too busy? I gotta, I gotta be in and out in two and a half hours. You I gotta understand. get from, you gotta get from instigating action to resolution in two and a half hours. Except I, for uh, Mandalorian, when Mandalorian season two comes out, I'm probably gonna watch the whole thing in a day. There was well, they do I, weekly. They, on I watched it on Christmas. Everyone's off Christmas, I and mean, that's like the exception. But like, just generally in my life, there's so much yeah. goddamn TV out there. I just, I just can't stand it. I, I'm with you on that. I'm past animated series. <laughs> I don't, I don't need to watch those anymore, so I'm probably going to pass on these guys. Is that why you fast-forwarded through the songs in Mulan? Yeah, that's why. Can I say one thing about Taika before we move on? Oh, boy. Yeah. Why, oh, boy. I was just going to say, this guy's rise to fame and, and glory has been very quick. I remember five or four years ago when I watched What We Did in the Shadows, and that was a very underground film. And yes, then but he was making movies long before that. In New Zealand. Yeah, but they were pretty fucking awesome movies. But no one saw them. I wouldn't say nobody saw them. Did you see them? I saw maybe two of them before that, yeah. Nobody saw them. <laughs> yeah, no. Did I you did. see The Hunt for the Wilder People? Yeah, I saw that in theaters. I did too. Great fucking movie. You and I are like the only two people. Did we see it together? Uh, I think I saw that one solo. Okay, but like, I mean, okay, I guess he's been working forever in New Zealand like, or even whatever. Back when I, when, I, when I met Sarah, she loved this movie, Eagle vs. Shark, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. 
And then I watched it. I'm like, oh, that's good. And then this other one called Boy, where like a guy loves Michael Jackson and models his life around him. Another good movie. Oh, I remember Boy. Okay. So this guy's been like kind of on the back burner for a while. Yeah. Because I don't know. I just felt like what we do in the shadows, hunt for the wilder people. There's like boom, Thor, Mm -hmm. boom, Jojo Rabbit, boom, Mandalorian episodes. But I guess, I guess he had a little long time coming. He's been working hard. Yeah. All right. You are Uh, right. Not a lot of people knew about him. It seems like he did international movies. I feel like the time from radar to like explosion is, is amazing. But anyway, What's right. next? You well, fellas? thanks to the Invisible Man, now Bloomhouse wants us to hang out with Dr. Frankenstein. For those of you that, uh, whatever, Frankenstein's <laughs> going to be made. <laughs> they're going to be Bloomhouse's next Universal Monsters reboot. I don't know what's going on, man. What? So pretty much just uh, Jason Bloom's been doing press and stuff for Invisible Man, and they've been asking, what do you want to make next in the monster verse, if, as they're calling it? If Bloomhouse would have done this like five to ten years ago. I would be all for it. But like, there's too many Frankenstein movies, man. Like, seriously. Come on. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. That's why I said no. Exactly, Tommy. You are so right. Now, please name a couple of the horrible Frankenstein movies. Okay, no, they, they weren't horrible. There are just too many of them. Like, That's, okay. Uh, okay, but the the horrible one that I think you're thinking of was in 2014. It was called I, Frankenstein. Oh, that was Aaron Eckhart? Awful. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I sat through that, and I forced myself to watch the whole thing. That's and exactly I, what I was thinking about. But 2015's Victor Frankenstein with uh, Daniel Radcliffe and uh, uh, Professor X. Oh, that's also a bad one. I liked it. I watched it twice. That one was decent. <laughs> that one was, was decent. It took a uh, different spin on the whole thing. So you like that, but you won't give a chance to our current modern day hammer style feature film production company a chance to make remake like i said if he would have done this like even three to four years ago couldn't have back then universal was had hopes of doing their dark universe bullshit they should have done it then because i just like i said it's just it's getting to the point of what's that other stuff that they've been rebooting and remaking way too many times oh yeah our next news article (laughs) godzilla yeah it's just getting to that point where I'm like, come on, man. Like, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it I a mean, shot. I mean, I kind of like the idea of Godzilla versus King Kong. I don't think this is the, this is a remake. They've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like I've seen this. But so that one, it's the big thing on this Godzilla versus Kong is now the runtime has been reportedly. Uh, Hour 45 to a screen test screening of it and he disclosed that it's under two hours long yeah it's an hour so a lot of people are like oh well how are you gonna successfully show the movie and the plot and all this stuff if it's under two hours easy because that's how all movies are were in the past were an hour and a half or an hour and 40 minutes yeah like we were talking last week we were talking about the fact that there's too many movies running over two hours And you go back and you watch the last couple of Godzilla movies that they remade. They're just like two and a half hours. And most of it's like filler bullshit that drags down the story. So this is a great move. People have been complaining about those in the Godzilla movies. The last two that have come out is that Godzilla like comes out and kicks ass at the end. Cause Mm -hmm. it's what you've been waiting for. And that's kind of mirroring the old Godzilla films. But they're just so long that it's just fucking tedious. So I think yeah. the bringing down the runtime would actually be beneficial. Also, Godzilla has fought King Kong back in 1962. I did see that. I wasn't dreaming. Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. You don't have to have a two-hour movie to get enough substance from a yeah. movie. <laughs> you don't need a three-hour movie like uh, the the Irishman. <laughs> you never need a three-hour movie. Split it into two hour and a half movies. I still like the idea of. Godzilla versus King Kong versus Cthulhu versus Pacific Rim robots. Ooh. It'll never happen. It could happen. Nah. And then have uh, O'Keefe in there with... Uh... <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> yeah, O'Keefe and Crocodile Dundee can be up there, yeah, too. Yeah, Paul Hogan with the Pacific Rim and Godzilla. And Don't forget Steve King Irwin. Kong and Steve Irwin. Adam, that guy is and dead. Shia Stop LaBeouf. making jokes about him. The All right, ghost. then we'll get Bandy Irwin, his daughter, and have a okay. stingray fight her. Whoa. All right. 
All right. So next article. I'm just saying, hold up here. Hold up. I'm not going to be a dick. I am, and I'm not. All right. Fucking Steve Irwin deserved what he got, man. <gasps> fucking. Oh, my He shouldn't God. be fucking with these animals. Goodness, he should not be fucking with out. these animals. Even oh, in fuck Dr. Doolittle 2, the animals say, don't fuck with us. And he didn't listen to Dr. Doolittle 2, so he can go fuck himself. He wasn't alive to see Dr. Doolittle 2, Adam. He was in Dr. Doolittle 2, and the animal's like, this guy's got to stop fucking with us. Yeah, this go is back. An unpopular, unpopular opinion. Wow. Wait, you guys think it's okay that this guy has been fucking with wild animals and getting away with it and making millions he's of not, dollars? He's not. He was with trying them. to promote conservation. Yeah, he's all for animal rights and and like. Well, he fucked with the wrong animal them. that day, guys. He wasn't fucking with them. He was swimming with them, and he didn't even like <laughs> make contact with them. They made contact with him. It jumped out of the boat or something. I'm not talking about this. <laughs> yeah. I. I loved Steve Irwin. So. Yeah. Oh, when I found out that he died, I was crushed. So why don't you guys do a fucking reviews episode of Crocodile Hunter Collision Course, his feature film? Is that a feature? All right. Yeah. No, I'd, I'll pass. You don't like him that much, huh? You just like to pretend like you like him? No, I do like him as a person, but like, I don't need to review a fiction film. <laughs> like, that's a fiction film, right? Yeah. That's like he surfs on crocodiles or something. No, I mean, it's just a movie about like he's protecting the animals from like poachers or some shit. Dude, it's not like a documentary. The, I loved all those movies in the nineties about like saving large mammals in foreign countries. Like mm-hmm. we were the like the United States was like always going to like all of these other continents and and imposing our values on them and saving. Like remember the Great Panda Adventure? Yeah, I think so. This is Congo. These are amazing movies. I don't know where they went, but like we need more. <laughs> we need more movies where 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 scientists go and save large mammals in other countries from poachers. Yeah, you should make one. Okay, so why why do I have to do it? I don't know. You seem very passionate about it. Well, it's just like a it's like a genre of film that I had as a kid that I just don't know where it is. I guess everyone's like fuck pandas, nah, fuck man. gorillas now. So you know who else is very passionate about films? Pornhub. And they're, oh. they're so passionate that they're actually trying to go away from adult films. What? That's how passionate they are. Pornhub is to release first ever non-adult film. Remember that part, folks. Non-adult film. This, this is a documentary that's been being made for years now. Shakedown, right? That's what it's called? Yeah, yeah. And it's like footage over the past 15 years of queer women and men who populate the lesbian strip club scene in Los Angeles. I could guarantee that anybody that goes on Pornhub to look up this movie, they're going to get sidetracked and they're going to end up watching other stuff. No, I think it's a smart <laughs> move. I mean, nobody would be like, oh, I could watch this really cool documentary or I could click on this link over here and Listen, have a good I night. Think the plan is- <laughs> I think the plan is they'll probably be watching a porn and then that's going to pop up and they'll be like, oh, this is kind of different. I already shot my load. Let's see what this is. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we should advertise Movie Toast on Pornhub. Yeah, we should. I think we get more followers. Who yeah. else would do that? Nobody we can, we can, revo- we, we can review porns, like porn parodies of movies that just came out. I mean, everybody goes on Pornhub, so that, that would be... <laughs> we could just do an advertisement and it'll be like... What were you expecting? Naked people? And then it'll just be like movie toast and it'll play the boom, 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 boom. That's how we advertise. <laughs> anyway, what's next, Tommy? Before Beauty and the Beast, there was Gaston and Le Fou. <laughs> oh. So Beauty and the Beast, there, uh, there's a, it looks like there's a prequel series with Josh Gad and Luke Evans that's in development. And guess what? But- it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. I feel like uh, it's going to be a hard sell. Like, how are we going to root for people that we did not like in the original series? In the original movie, they were villains, and now we're going to the love actors. Them? Yeah, everyone likes Luke Evans, and Josh Gad is like slowly becoming a uh, diamond in the rough. I guess I he's don't know. a big Disney guy. Yeah, this this so, is ca- kind of interesting here because this this came out from Josh Gad and his writing partner. They were working on a Muppets Take Manhattan sequel series for disney plus that disney uh, then passed on it and they're right. like well, let's do a guest on the floor the flow i don't know his fucking name let's do a fucking spinoff of those guys and like let's fucking do it it's in its early early development stages right now so i mean we can keep monitoring it 
but I mean, of all the Disney live action remakes of their animated films, mm-hmm. I think Beauty and the Beast was like the roughest one to watch. Nah, <laughs> man, I like Beauty. You think and so? Beast. I liked it. I caught it on TV a couple of weeks ago again, and I'm like, this is still good. I thought maybe get, Maleficent get... or maybe Cinderella. Maleficent ain't a remake, okay? It's like some <laughs> kind of strange retelling. I like. What was I like the other one? Cinderella I, was good. Um, I kind of like. I kind of. Um, people don't know this about me, but I kind of really like Disney stuff. Yeah. And these remakes just so bad. Just like can't handle it, man. Hey, you said it was the roughest to watch, but it's holding up on a seventy-one percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't Grossed care. Over what one point the... two billion dollars worldwide on a reported reported budget of 160 million. Yeah, so... I don't care what the masses think, okay? They don't have an educated <laughs> opinion on film. You know, I mean Yeah, like, where's their I... podcast? Yeah, where's their podcast? That Fuck gets them. 50 views a week if if we push it hard. I don't like I I, I even like uh, Eva uh Hermione. I like her a lot. Emma Watson? And she couldn't even save this one for me. It was too nah, long. Dog. Wow. You know what it is? Actually, here, I'll tell you what it is. I know exactly what it is. The animated films are way, way too good. You can't even like hold a you know a candle to them. So when I watch them, I'm just like, oh God, I gotta go watch this out of my brain with the animated film. Yeah, Adam, like it's Beauty and the Beast is a phenomenal film. Oh, that's like my first movie I saw in theaters. And you wanna know my favorite, my favorite Disney movie? Um Take a guess. If I had a guess, Mulan. <laughs> yeah, you love the music in Mulan. Um, Give you a hint. It's not animated, but it is. But it isn't. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? No. Song That's in not the South. Disney. Is that Disney? No, I think it's Touchstone, which is a subsidiary. Yeah. Mary um, Poppins. Touchstone, the unused subsidiary. Of Mar- Mary Poppins. Oh, Mary Poppins. I can't believe I went to Song of the South before Mary Poppins. <laughs> Okay. Someone needs this chimney sweep. Mary sweet. Poppins is my... By Dick but not that Mary Poppins returns. I, it was okay. It wasn't I great. Didn't like it. Mm. I didn't like it. You know what? who else is returning? And I, I don't know. What was do you that? think of it? Tom Cruise in Top Gun. <laughs> oh, so, so yeah, Maverick? that's great. It looks like we're going to be on the highway to the danger zone sooner than expected. How sooner, Tommy? I'm so glad you asked me that. We're going to be getting it two days early. Sometimes babies come two days early. Sometimes movies come two yeah, days early. Yeah, premium movies. I didn't know Miles Teller is going to be playing Goose's son. Yeah. He, yeah. He's A. And he's going to be uh, is this Maverick's what Miles, new protege. Is this what Miles Teller has been doing? He's been just like filming this. I was wondering where he went. <laughs> yeah. Now he's been shooting Fantastic Four too. I saw, I finally making, saw it. Are you kidding me? I finally me? saw the I'm first one. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't mind it. Who did you, you tell didn't mind it? Oh, you weren't here when I said that. Oh, well, uh, you know what? You're right. I, I wasn't it. here, but I listened to the episode and you were also okay with pixels, which is blasphemy. <laughs> I so, love pixels. pixels. Good. pixels you know, once again, really good. if you just don't take it seriously, <laughs> Kevin James could be the president. <laughs> on I said, if you get past the fact that Kevin James is the president. That's not the whole point of the movie, Corey. The, the point of the movie is it's a bad movie. Uh-oh. My job here on Movie Toast, everybody, is to hate film. All right. So um, can I go to the next one? No. No. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you obviously so, weren't going to listen to me anyway. I was going to. No. Yeah. No, don't. Okay, well, Puss in Boots is in the Uncharted movie now. <laughs> And once again, oh, what is he doing movie? in that movie? Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, Uncharted is now getting you know more and more A-list talent behind it. Um, Antonio Banderas is joining it. We've been talking about this fucking Uncharted movie for way too long. Yeah. First, it had like eight directors, and then uh, Tom Holland was just like, "I'm sticking with our." So then people started to try to make it, and then it finally got a director. And this is how movies are made in Hollywood. You have a script, you have an actor, you have a director, and then it starts getting all this like <laughs> flow of money and attention. They're all put together piecemeal, like they're products or something. So here's Antonio Banderas joining the Uncharted movie now that it is a feasible thing to make everyone cash. So we'll probably I have a see a really funny feeling that this movie is just going to blow. 
the we're weird thing is a female lead. I'm telling you right now, the future guys, this is a prophecy. You're going to see a female lead sign on pretty soon. And we'll have to talk about that bullshit. And then the movie will come out and no one will care. Like Charlize Theron. No, no. Like probably someone Tom Holland's age. I love interest form or something. Oh, you mean like, uh, what's her name from star Wars that they're making Daisy a movie Ridley? together. Yeah. You think she's going to join in? No, <laughs> but do you guys think that maybe since I think this is Sony, do you think that they'll have a crossover movie with fucking uh, Tomb Raider since they're doing another Alicia Vin, Vin whatever? Vikander. Alicia. Vikander, yeah, since they're doing another one. Do you think they're going to make a fucking PlayStation Universe crossover event movie? Couldn't tell uh, you. I don't know. Probably not, but let's hope no. You know, Because yeah, aren't they I kind of the not. same? They're like globe-trotting, like artifact staling people or some shit yeah i mean they're all indiana jones so yeah which they might even be better than the new indiana jones i'm sad about the new indiana jones can we not talk about it <laughs> i guess Until how about we talk about out. uh another remake that's set for disney plus <laughs> <sighs> three men and a baby see right, i'm hoping ahead. oh sorry no, no, no. You go ahead. No, you were you were next to the line. I was? It's yeah. a cue? Are we yep. British? Okay. Yeah. So the first one is amazing because it's set perfectly in the late 80s, right before it becomes the 90s, and it doesn't work out of that time zone. It's actually a period piece. People don't understand this. And it was directed by Leonard Nimoy, which also made it amazing. And there's no way that it's going to be good now. It's just going to be stupid. And this movie is one of those movies that should have never been remade. And I'm Where are they going to get for the three guys? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I hope, I wish this was a continuation of uh, Three Men and a Wedding or whatever the last third one was. I want to see fucking Tom Selleck, fucking Steve Gutenberg, and fucking Ted Danson, Ted Danson as old men raising a baby. I guess, or yeah. Or raising the, the seeing the, the baby older. Or something. Oh, yeah, yeah grand, grand. Although, I guess, isn't that kind of the premise of fucking Full House? I don't know. But I, I'd like to see those guys Whoa, come back. Oh, what if that was? And the baby from Three Men and a Baby was the oldest. Uh, what's her name? Uh, DJ Tanner? DJ. No. Yeah. Was it DJ? I don't know. Why do we give time of day to these kinds of stories? Because. So this is. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> and I cut out other stories that weren't even as good as this one. Oh, you know who it's going to be? <laughs> oh, this, I'm just kidding at this one. It's going to be what? Adam Sandler, Kevin James, and Josh Gad. Oh, dude, I would watch the <laughs> fuck out of that, dude. Sign me the fuck up. <laughs> Here's the synopsis they gave, though, for the remake. Uh, life for a New York City bachelor and his two single friends is hilariously turned upside down when a girlfriend dumps a baby in his lap and disappears from his life forever. There was just a fucking uh, ABC Family Freeform show called the, uh, I don't know what the fuck it was called, Diaper Money. I don't know. There was a show like this on ABC Family recently that I watched four seasons of, and I don't remember. Like we've done this, we've been here. Let's get over that. What? Okay. <laughs> I'd rather drink oatmeal through my asshole than watch a remake of Three Men and a Baby. And I, I want. Can Which... you do that? Can we do a live stream yeah. on our? website of you drinking oatmeal from your asshole as me and Tommy watch three men and a baby on a fucking watch party and you're just oh, slurping man. up fucking creamy hot fucking oatmeal it's a, it's a turn of phrase it's I've never heard literal. that but I love it I've never heard that phrase before I made I it up, up. <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> usually it's when you new turn of phrase. phrase there you go new, <laughs> new, turn, new of turn, turn of phrase it's gonna I, catch on with the kids I just I have to tell every all our listeners what you emailed is amazing and I wish I would have read that instead uh, the the what Adam gave me for the title of what we just talked about are you ready for three men and a Mickey <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you can tell this week, I did not do good headlines. I was like in between movies. I'm like, I got to write something. You didn't it's just, read half it's of them. so bad that it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> when we saw the trailer for My Spy in the uh, beginning of Onward, the trailer, uh, the Shrek joke went over perfectly. That There's was, a but... Shrek joke in the yeah, trailer? Yeah, at the, for at My the Spy? end, uh, Kristen Shaw and Little Girl are watching fucking Dave Bautista dancing at like a fucking restaurant and Kristen Shaw's like this is like the end of Shrek at the dance party 
the joke went over big time. Oh my in god! My audience. You know what that? You know what that tells me, Tommy? Uh-oh. I'm going. F- I'm going full John on this one. <laughs> you know what that oh, tells me about boy. the script when Uh-oh. an actor just blurts out some fucking line about some movie from 2001 that people Uh-oh. don't remember. <laughs> Everyone remembers Shrek. Shrek is a national hero. That- no, it's not relevant to the zeitgeist anymore. Shrek, I talk about Shrek once a week at least. Almost every day. I'm s I am I do not know what to say about that. I'm saying that. Uh, wait, Shrek wait, is I want to hear good. hold on. I want to hear Corey go full John. While that Adam means this is pussy. like a mumblecore movie where they didn't write a script. They did like uh what's that called when they don't do a script? They do yeah, like that's a, mumble core. But listen, no, or maybe know, no, maybe no, the screenwriter no. is a very fucking smart guy who's a big fan of shrek like a lot of the world is oh oh my god he's gonna defend i'm having i'm talking about my spy and he's defending (laughs) shrek (laughs) no i'm saying maybe the screenwriter's a shrek fan and that was an actual line of dialogue in the script there's a there's a term for a script that doesn't have very many words or anything it's called like a script a a treat Mm, it's got like a stupid name but um yeah there's outlines like, and treatments it's not this it's not a, a real term it's like a stupid term for oh. for scripts that aren't done and then they have all of the actors mumble core out the entire thing whenever you have like a movie if you've ever watched a movie where every other word is the f word or every like it has like a bunch of jokes that are really really old let me give an example ghostbusters from 2016 Every other word in that movie, or no, no, no. Okay. So there's a joke in, in, in Ghostbusters where she's like, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. And that has, that's like an Oprah thing from 2004, right? Whenever you see something like that or in some of these mobile core movies that are rated R and every other word is the F word, that's because there's no script. What they do is they just show up and they just run the camera and they have the actors like improv. But like, you, are, you hmm? could have a screenwriter who likes to say fuck, all right? No, that's not what's going on. I do it's that. in all these new comedies that have been coming out in the last like four years. It's like they are have like a lazy writer or they think people are funnier than they really are. And what you get is this like shitty dialogue, bad movies. And when I see that there's a movie where one of the jokes is that's the end of Shrek. Uh, a 2001 movie. Reference. I believe the quote is this is like the end of Shrek and the, this is like the dance party at the end of Shrek. Very important. Yeah, it's still quoting, so, it's still quoting Shrek. It's stupid. It's stupid. And a writer, years ago, a writer wouldn't write that. That's some. I would. That's I'm some all about that Shrek life. Okay. <laughs> He's defending him again. Corey. He's defending Shrek again. <laughs> I bet he would even defend Shrek Three: The Marriage of the Babies. I, I. The funny story is I don't fully. Shrek no, that's third? Shrek Forever After. Oh no! Wait, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. yeah no, like, no. <laughs> Shrek Three, Shrek the Third. I don't remember. I just remember Justin Timberlake was in it, and they want him to be king. That's all I remember. But oh Shrek, Shrek was a fucking phenomenal movie. Shrek Two, it was okay. Shrek Three, I don't remember. Shrek Four, I didn't like when I saw it, but when I watched it again last year, it grew on me. Look, Shrek, I'm not. Attacking. You went from my spy I'm to Shrek. My spy. We went Stop from talking Shrek about my this. spy to all. He just went over the entire filmography of Shrek. Yeah, he loves Shrek. I didn't even know. I didn't talk about Shrek scary stories. You uh, just Shrek, did. Shrek Christmas. Uh, Shrek fucking the video 40, game. Shrek racers. Shrek pinball. I didn't talk about everything. I didn't talk about Shrek milk that turns your milk green. Shrek. I mean Shrek. Oh my god. I mean Dave Batista. <laughs> Dave Batista. He means- looks like Shrek. That he needs to ugh, he needs to have this movie just drop so everyone can just shit on it. It can be bad. It can get out of theaters, and he can move on. He's great in Guardians. He's going to get a couple more of those, and then he needs to take a couple acting classes. And he needs mm-hmm. to get another character under his belt because he's a good actor, and he's a nice guy, and he deserves better than this. But we're just at this awkward time for him. He's You know where he is? He's in the rock stage after Scorpion King. But where we're still getting like the rundown, the rundown, Gridiron Gang, the Tooth Fairy, yeah, Don't those. Say anything bad about that's, the rundown? Are you kidding me? That's it where sucks. Dave Batista is, right when The Rock is like laughable as an actor, and he has to like slowly change his name from The Rock in all of his credits to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and then finally, like twenty years later, he just goes by Dwayne Johnson. But everyone still Kevin calls Hart's him The Rock. Best friend. Yeah. And and so and so that's where we are. And I've talked too much about this. I'm getting agitated. I'm gonna give myself some hemorrhoids. Okay, I'm done. Anyway. Anyway. Do we have any more stories? 
No, we're out of stories. That's okay, why we're let's wrap this up. Yeah. None of you guys are going to hear any of this because Adam's going to edit it out. Yeah, who wants to hear about fucking... I mean, they'll hear about Shrek because Shrek Shrek deserves his Uh-oh. own episode. Uh-oh. <laughs> I could do a whole thing called Shrek Cast and talk about Shrek once a week. Oh, that'd be great, actually. I, 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 I think I, I just found my next my next podcast when, I, when I'm unemployed. Dream, DreamWorks, their best film is, is the How to Train Your Dragon series. It's not even Shrek. Ooh. Debatable, but uh, yeah, that was a great. Every movie in that franchise is good, but what about Ice not, Age? Not as I. That's a uh, 20th Century Fox's Blue that's Sky. Blue Sky, which oh, is now which is now defunct. Yeah. yeah, because it got purchased by Disney, and Disney's like, we've already got too many animated studios, and all you ever did was fucking Rio. In so, Rio two, I didn't even see Rio two. I, I didn't Rio either. One who yeah. who did? What was that movie? It wasn't called Rango or something? Uh, that was yeah. Nickelodeon. That was Nickelodeon uh, and Paramount, which I it, really thought I'd hate it, but I I enjoyed it. Yeah. That one was pretty good, and Johnny Depp was having a hard time around that time. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go eat. Well, well, we gotta say our goodbyes on the podcast. I thought we did already. No, we didn't. We just been talking. Anyway, guys, I'm really tired of talking about Batista, so you know. Like, should we wrap it up? Yeah. So, uh, you should definitely subscribe to Shrekcast. It's coming very soon, where me and other Shrek enthusiasts talk about our favorite green ogre and his sidekick, Shrekcast. Game, almost coming soon. Yeah. Um, if you like the Movie Toast podcast and you made it, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The movie, if you like the Movie Toast podcast, like, subscribe, leave a five star review, and then tell Adam to stop fucking talking about Shrek. And if you like the podcast, but you're kind of frustrated because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about half the time, don't worry because I fucking know everything there is to know about Shrek. Although I haven't read the actual children's book that it's based upon. Ah! Uh... I know what Adam's gonna watch He's this week. Leaving this podcast. Wait, but what if he watches that movie and then he try- he has to review it next week? Oh, I can review it right now if you want. <laughs> I can, Corey's like, I it. got called in for overtime, so I'm going to have to. No, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be back next you week. guys want to give an actual goodbye? I'll cut all that out for you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to nothing. I'm really, really funny. I'm really, really being. <laughs> you sound like Gru. I don't know. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Movie Tales podcast this week. If you went batshit crazy over Shrek shit like I did and you're really frustrated, like and subscribe, leave a five-star review, tell us you want to stop talking about Shrek because from 2001, no one should give a fuck anymore. Puss in Boots is the best character from that franchise anyway. Bullshit. Shrek say, for life. You want to say goodbye, Tommy? Bye-bye. You want to say goodbye, Adam? In the morning, I'm making waffles. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Puss in Boots doesn't have cool catchphrases like that.